Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to replace a bad AC capacitor and the AC unit at my warehouse just stopped working. You can hear a humming sound but the fan's not spinning. In this video, I'll walk through how I diagnose and replace what's probably the most common AC issue, a bad run capacitor. Let's get right into it. Step 1. Turn off the power. Safety is always first, so before touching anything, make sure the power is off. Find your disconnect box next to the unit. It usually has a pull-out plug. Remove it completely and set it aside. If you're not familiar with electrical work or your local codes, don't risk it. Call Licensed HVAC Pro. Step 2. Remove the access panel. Use a 5 16 nut driver or a regular screwdriver to remove the screws holding the side panel. Step 3. Confirm the power is off. Even though we pulled the disconnect, double check with a multimeter. Now, check the label on your capacitor. Ours reads 30 by 5 microfarads, plus or minus 6%, 440 volts. We'll need this info later when replacing it. Step 4. Discharge the capacitor. Although rare, capacitors can hold a charge. To be safe, take an insulated screwdriver and short the terminals by touching common to fan and common to hermetic. Just a quick tap between each pair is enough. Step 5. Inspect the capacitor. Look at the top. If it's bulging or mushroom shaped, it's bad. If it's leaking fluid, it's also bad. Even if it looks fine, testing is the only way to be sure. In our case, you can see it's domed and bubbled up. Still, we're going to test it to confirm. Step six, take a photo of the wiring. Before removing anything, snap a quick picture of how the wires are connected. You'll typically see C for common, Herm for the compressor or hermetic, and fan. Or at the very least, if you can see one of them, you can use common sense to figure out the direction to the others. Use needle nose pliers to carefully disconnect the wires, or your hands if you don't have one handy. Remove any mounting straps or screws holding the capacitor in place. Step 7. Test the old capacitor. You can see our capacitor is bad. It's domed and bubbled up, but we'll test it with a multimeter anyway. The capacitor has three terminals. C is for common, Herm for hermetic compressor, and fan. Looking at the labels of the capacitor, confirming again that it is 30 by 5 microfarads with plus or minus 6%. We will test it with a basic multimeter and another multimeter that has the capacitance function. Method 1. Resistance test with a basic multimeter. Step 1 would be to put the black probe to common and the red to ohms. Step 2 would be to set your multimeter to ohms. I use the 2 milliohm or the 200 kiloohm setting. Step 3. Put the black lead on the C or common terminal and the red line on either fan or herm. A good capacitor will make the meter jump or climb and then fall back to one. Let's test the fan side first. And nothing, it stays at one. The meter doesn't move at all, so that part of the capacitor is dead. Now let's try the herm side. You'll see the meter jumps and climbs, then eventually drops back. So the compressor side still kind of works, but since one side is shot, the whole capacitor is basically useless. Based on this and the sound we heard earlier, the compressor running and the fan not running, we know that the fan side of the capacitor is dead. The new capacitor has the same terminals, C, fan, and Herm, and the same ratings as the old capacitor, 30 by 5 microfarads plus or minus 6% and 440 volts. Method 2. A multimeter with capacitance mode. Next, we'll use a multimeter that has a capacitance mode to get exact numbers. Step 1 would be to put the black probe in the common and the red in capacitance. Step 2 would be to switch the multimeter to capacitance setting. Step 3 would be putting the black lead onto C and the red probe onto the terminal that you're testing. When testing the bad capacitor, C to fan shows 0 microfarads. It should be close to 5, but we're getting nothing, so we know for sure that this capacitor is bad. Now let's test the new capacitor. C to fan shows 4.96 microfarads, which is spot on, since that's well within the plus or minus 6% range of 5 microfarads. C to Herm gives us exactly 30 microfarads, which is perfect. This is how a fully working dual capacitor should look. Step 9 would be to install the new capacitor. Mount the new capacitor in place and reconnect the wires using the photo you took earlier as a reference. Follow the colors of the wires shown in the photo so you don't make a mistake. Slide the panel back on, screw it in, and reconnect power at the disconnect box or the breaker. Step number 10 would be to test the system. Turn your AC back on and listen. Everything should sound smooth and cool air should be flowing. 
So some final thoughts. Capacitors are cheap. This one cost me about $16. And this fix is super easy if you take your time. I'd recommend keeping a spare on hand for future emergencies. If this video helped you out, hit that like button. Also drop any questions or comments below. See you next time.